The big talking point coming over the last week is the announcement franchises being granted to the Fiji and Drua and of course the Moana Pacifica. And it's great to have Kevin Senior come, who's the general manager of Moana Pacifica. And Kev, I've got to ask you, and people are asking me, where are the players going to come from for this team? Because you have not got long before you're anticipated to be part of Super Rugby. Um, first of all, my little Sufu, my little Malangi Ma, my little Fionga, Fawono Ken. It's a pleasure to be here and um, the opportunity just to discuss this is a privilege. Um, in terms of players, um, that's the discussions we're having at the moment with agents. Also, the national unions such as Samoa and Tonga, identifying who's actually out there in the market. A number of actually, uh, since um, the announcement of the news last week, it's done us favours too because there are a number of players who are overseas, given COVID, are expressing interest in being involved as well. So when are you anticipating to be able to finally start making an announcement, putting pen yeah, to paper? Yeah, good point. Um, so since the kind of conditional um, provisions and around the licence, um, over the next couple of weeks we'll start to kind of drive and then discuss with agents, players, and hopefully have contracts, provisional contracts in front of them. Yeah, talo falava, Kevin. Ramoi. Seki. <laughs> hey, mate, like, for me, total supporter of Moana Pacifica. I think it's a fantastic move. The only... Concern I have is that it's going to be based in South Auckland. Can you explain to me why it's in South Auckland and not in Samoa or Nukolofa? Yeah, there's probably a couple, of, a couple of practical challenges at the moment. Also, when the kind of, I suppose, the opportunity to put in a Pacifica team, COVID was obviously yeah, is on our doorstep at the moment. And um, also to understand is that there will be home games played up in Apia uh, for, this, for this team. Um, and then also to understand is that at the moment Tonga don't have an infrastructure in terms of a facility, a venue at this point in time, but they're working towards that. So to be based in South Auckland, population is double that in terms of Samoa being nearly 200,000 uh, on island, but then there's double that in and around certainly in New Zealand and offshore in the likes of the States and Hawaii. Is it a goal to move the, the Moana Pacifica there eventually? Yeah, in terms of my own kind of personal vision, I'd love for it to be based out of I've got to be really careful too because the team is geared up towards Tonga and Samoa, but I understand too there will be satellites as such, Moana Pacifica based in both islands. So you talk about initially it's going to be in South Auckland, the challenges around that, the ability to coexist for not just the Blues but the Chiefs as well, those conversations and I mean there is, do you think there's a fear out there of all of a sudden when you're, you're competing for players, is that going to be the landscape in the short term given the fact you've got to put together probably a squad of 38 players in the next nine months? Yeah, the, the, the key part to it is in terms of the term, um, the licence term, is that this team needs to be competitive. So it's a balance of both, eh, in terms of having established players and all those who are overseas that can help this team in terms of performance. And the other part is the backfill and actually connect into the high performance um, environments up in Tonga and Samoa and actually look at their existing programmes. They've got the National 20s programme among Samoa, Tonga and Fiji and also a kind of National A level. So in terms of identifying talent, that's who we're going to connect into. For my law level, so for Kevin. Um, revenue. Yeah. Um, so there's a guarantee of, from World Rugby, I think that I read 1.3. There's a share of the broadcasting rights, uh, two and a half. Um, and obviously the remainder of that money in the short term has to come from the corporate sector, either here in the Pacific or from somewhere around the world. Yeah. So that's going to be a big challenge. Yeah, um, and at the moment there is an investor group uh, made up of Pacifica as well that are actually coming to help and support and behind the scenes too to make up kind of the, the revenue as well in addition to what you just talked about. Eligibility, so how does that work from a player's point of view? Are you play for Moana Pacifica, then you have to play for Tonga and Samoa? Yeah, good question. So um, what we've done is we've uh, used the New Zealand model as such and flipped it on its head. So 80% of the team have to be eligible and or have played for Samoa, Tonga and or Fiji and any Pacifica teams. Uh, so for those who are going to be aligning themselves into Moana Pacifica, you can't play with the All Blacks and Australia. And you have stage? to say that. At any yeah. stage? Is that no, no. They commit? Um, so I mentioned 80% of the squad, of a 38-man squad, that, that gives a kind of opportunity to eight who are ineligible. So when it comes down to setting and picking these, selecting these players, you've got to have a coaching staff, right? Yeah, you've got that's to get right, yeah. A team of people to come together. How how close are you to announcing that and, and talking to the people that you believe can drive this team and get them competitive Question. next season? Yeah, there's a couple of things to that. Is ensuring that we have the right fit. There are a number of candidates who are probably quite obvious are out there in the market and who have expressed interest. So we're just trying to work through that with the committee and a select panel um, once we kind of shortlist those names.
Tupu of Isle, Steve Hansen, received this title from the village of Viala in <laughs> 2015. Yeah. I was at that ceremony. I was at that salfai. If that cost me a few, cost me a few bucks too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just saying, he's available, sitting on the couch. And yeah, good point, and there are a number of others too, yes, but uh, definitely uh, we're exploring, you know, the possible candidates, and there are some really good names in the hat. From a high-performance point of view, are Samoa and Tonga going to be contributing to the budget? Um, well, not, not at this stage. Um, uh, however, that's still kind of be an open opportunity later on as well. But in terms of high performance, that's kind of where that World Rugby revenues come in, in to support uh, the high performance kind of Samoa and Tonga, their players, but also connecting into the likes of the national coaches, which we are undertaking at the moment with Seilala Mapasua, Vincent, and then also Peter Harding, who's up at Tonga Rugby Union as well. What's the biggest challenge you see right now? given the fact that you've got a short turnaround, the fact that how do you get sustainability, how do you look at this in the long term, and the fact yeah, there is pressure to deliver in the short term? Yeah, so a bit of a background is as, as a feasibility business reports have been done, eh? so there's quite a bit of depth and, you know, like a lot of work on in and behind the scenes. So that kind of gives us confidence. However, we're under time pressure eh, in terms of appointment of coaches and the roster. But uh, we're pretty confident. Um, our Pacific are pretty resourceful in terms of yeah, getting kind of emails, phone calls from aunties and uncles in and around. Not only <laughs> the just words gone out, you're saying the yep. words gone out. <laughs> There's a lot of time. But, but it, yeah. oh, and we're not naive. It's going to be uh, you know a bit of a challenge, and there's time pressure, but we're prepared for the task as well. Can a bit of a bit of a conflict of interest for you at the moment, being representative of the RPA, and then you're going to general manager of rugby. When does that transition? Um, happen? In the next week or so, yeah. And then you're full time, and it's all Moana Pacific Air. And then, I mean, in terms of your responsibilities, mm. is it, I mean, how broad does it get? And particularly, have you put together a board which is going to help you make yeah. these critical decisions? Yeah, so uh, there is a steering group, and that'll probably be officialised soon uh, upon the creation of the entity. But then also, um, in terms of my role, um, it's a privilege actually to be in this kind of, be one as being approached to see if I'd kind of consider this. And then in terms of the announcement last week, I think there's a number of key people have been, you know, like uh, drivers in that, and that's our patron, two of us have seen uh, Brian Williams. But then I'm also really mindful of those who have pl uh, played for Samoa and Tonga, who have contributed so much. And I think of my late uncle, Papa Itele Fatilofa. Mm. So, had a vilema for him, may, yeah. uh, upon the announcement on you, so... Yeah. Yeah. May he rest in peace. When's the, when's the, when's the cut-off time for finding the funds? to actually make this hurt. There must be a day oh, where you go, we need our 10 million now, otherwise we... Yeah, so, so the last two parts of the conditional licence uh, being approved is actually the discussions with New Zealand Rugby are to have with Australia in terms of their involvement next year. And the other part is in terms of uh, clarifying and understanding what is that kind of revenue share for this team being in the competition. Just the last thing, you talk about putting together a roster and you've talked to a lot of players who are overseas. Yeah. But reality is that the fact when you're filling out the squad, are as players in Australia and New Zealand that are available, they're obviously guys that you know well that are here and yeah. now. Will they be players you have to look at? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Pacifica everywhere, as you know. Yeah. And then there are um, a number of players who are in the system. And we're also considering, you know, the idea of playing for Samoa and or Tonga, and then also in addition to that, this is actually something quite meaningful. So this team is to support the likes of Tonga and Samoa as well. So from a financial point of view, I know that, and I probably got these figures wrong, when I was, when I was Blues coach, minimum wages was um, 85, 90, maximum was 195, then you went on to being an All Black. I mean, are you got any of those rules where you're yeah, going good, to pay the same? Because so, for me, the yeah. interesting thing is no use getting a young Pacifica and they're not paying him what he should be getting. Yeah, so, uh, and that's probably where the key uh, organisation that we're working alongside with is the Pacific Players Association. So, like, sort of um, using kind of the New Zealand collective employment uh, in terms of we're just like for like for this team. So, in terms of minimums, maximums, it's very similar, or actually the same in terms of the model here in New Zealand in terms of the pay model. Great. This is an exciting move for Super Rugby. We're, we're excited to, to, to see the development. We're excited you'll be able to come on and give us some insight to that, how far down the... And it sounds to me you are a long way down the path. So thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I'm sure you've given us all a little bit of an insight into where we are right now. Let's think about if we look at what exactly what we do know. In fact, and these are important for us. Principle, it will be based in Auckland in the short term. The possibility of moving into the islands. But games will be played at Mount Smart Stadium and Eden Park and in the islands, OK? 20% non-Pacific Island eligible players. Other 80% Pacific Island declared players. And they will be contracted to Moana Pacifica, not to New Zealand Rugby, That's which correct, is yeah. signif significant as well. Thank you so much once again.